Hey developers, today I'm gonna to talk to you about five JavaScript frameworks and or libraries that you should learn about in 2019. So these are JavaScript frameworks and libraries that I find really useful and not a whole lot of people are talking about them. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all about them. And also, if I have missed something here or you disagree, I want you guys to leave a comment in the, the comments below and that would be really awesome. And just tell me what JavaScript frameworks that you guys like. And also, if you stay all the way to the end, I might have a surprise, so make sure you do that. But before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Let me tell you guys a little bit about MongoDB. So if you're not familiar with it, MongoDB is a document database. It's really scalable, it's flexible. Essentially, MongoDB stores data in these JSON-like documents, and it makes it really easy to make ad hoc queries, you can index, you can aggregate, aggregate the data pretty easily and it's 100% free to use. So you can download it and use it on your own server or you can use something like MongoDB Atlas and have it hosted in the cloud. So I want you guys to click on the link in the description below. You can learn all about MongoDB and download it 100% for free. So just click on that link in the description and thank you for once again to MongoDB. All right, so let's talk about the five JavaScript frameworks and libraries that you should learn about in 2019 and I already clicked on it, but here, is the first one. So this uh, Glimmer.js actually came out a few years ago, but it's still out there. It's still being updated. So what it is, it's a small, light, and fast UI component library for the web. This was kind of an offshoot of the developers who created Ember.js. They created Glimmer.js as just kind of the small, light library. Um, so you has, it has the, sort of the same build tools as Ember.js, has the same build pipeline, development production, uh, it's, it has TypeScript support out of the box. It's really small. So if you're looking for a new kind of UI component library just to play around with, check out Glimmer.js. Go to the website, download it. It's really fun. It's easy to get up and running. And uh, I believe you just use the Ember CLI tool to do it. The next one is Svelte. I'm actually getting more and more interested in Svelte as time goes on. And the reason is, is because, you know, it's, it just makes a lot of sense. So in modern day JavaScript framework world today, we have these JavaScript frameworks and UI frameworks, uh, UI libraries that is, that are just, they get so bloated and get so big after a while. And what happens is we have all these extra dependencies and libraries that we have to add in to do something that perhaps should have been in the Java, in, inside the library or framework, or maybe it shouldn't. I know it, it just depends, but you still, at the end of the day, you're still left with this JavaScript framework that's running in the background while your page loads and everything renders. But the cool thing about Svelte is it compiles to frameworkless vanilla JavaScript, which really stands out. So you write your Svelte app, you run it through your compiler at the end, and you just outputted vanilla JS. You're, it's not relying on any outside libraries, it just works. And that's kind of the the secret sauce behind it, and it's pretty pretty fun. It's it's pretty awesome. You don't have to worry about uh, you know your React or Vue or Angular library getting too big and the bundle size getting large because this is you know fairly sp small. And you know, and of course, like many of the other frameworks, it's you know truly reactive. They put on they put on the front page. It's truly reactive, so it it works just like many of the other single page application frameworks out there. So this one, uh, AnimeJS is an animation library. So like I said at the beginning, I'm talking about JavaScript frameworks and libraries. So AnimeJS is a really cool way to do animations. Um, for those of you who are a little bit more senior, you've probably heard of uh, GreenSock animation platform. So people sometimes compare AnimeJS to GreenSock. Um, it's, unless you're into animation, you may not have ever heard of this, but it, it's easy to change multiple animations, properties together, create timelines. It's been out for a little while. Um, I, I've played around with it. It's pretty awesome. You know, something definitely that not a lot of people are talking about, but you should check it out. And it's definitely a good alternative to GSAP or Velocity. Video.js, now this is a little bit smaller uh, library. It only has about 4,000 stars on GitHub. But it, it easily it allows you to easily create a video playing in the background. 
And uh, you may think at first, well, well, I could do this easily. Just give me the HTML5 video tag. I'm just gonna plop in the video in the background and put some transparency and I'm fine. But you, uh, you'll realize quickly that uh, the ratios of your video and the screen sizes is becomes very difficult and there's a lot more to it than that so this does all that hard work of of doing the resizing and doing the aspect ratios for you of your video so that way it properly shows on the complete full page of your of your website and you don't have any problems you can actually go to video.js which by the way is not the greatest <laughs> name because in google and every time you type in video it thinks you misspelled video so it's like, do you mean video? No, I meant video with a B. But anyways, uh, yeah, it's just a real lightweight library to make all that much easier for you. And I've noticed this trend in, in if you've seen the last few years, and maybe, maybe the last year or two, there's so many websites now that have the, the background playing, uh, in a video playing in the background. And it def definitely helps with engagement. I'm not sure... I would say there's probably some network issues when you're loading all these videos in the background, but you know, most people aren't super fast connections nowadays. Uh, and, and of course, a lot of people use GSAP to do all sorts of fun little animations on the website. I mean, you can literally go to Carl's Jr. or, or McDonald's or any of these websites and you can see that a lot of them are using these animation libraries to make their, the website a little better. And also if you get into working as a freelancer, You'll see when you start adding these little touches, I think a little animation goes a long way, but like sometimes clients love this stuff and they're like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden a, a website that, you know, is $500 becomes like $10,000 because you added in GSAP and video.js and you're having animations in the background and, you know, you're using CSS grids and, and Flexbox and you're making this perfect cool website for them. Anyways, a little tangent there. Gridsum. I actually did a video on Gridsum. So this is a modern site generator for Vue.js. It's based on the Jamstack website in PWA. The, you can, it's similar to Gatsby. So if you're coming from the React, React world, Gatsby.js, super popular. So it's kind of Vue's version of that. Um, they, they're actually, I, I uh, reviewed them right when they began. They only had like three plugins and since then, I think they have like hundreds of plugins. They have many, many more plugins. So what I mean is that you can easily take your content management system and then plug it in because it's kind of, you bring your own data. So you have this website up, you um, it's a progressive web app, and then you connect it to like a data source that uh, then can automatically be updated in the, in the grid some site. So that way you don't have to go in and update the HTML and CSS every time you want to make a change to the site. All you do is go to the data source and you make an update there and then it flows back through good sum um, for the most part. So it's this is kind of the, the newer ways of doing uh, website design is to have these kind of site generators and it, 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 it creates this HTML and CSS and it has these data sources that it pulls information into. Uh, so it's really cool, it, it, uh, it's markdown based. Uh, it keeps growing, it's actually a sponsors now corporate sponsorships that are helping propel it even faster. So I keep an eye out for Gridsum. It's definitely, uh, I would, you know, if I were them, I'm going to go on a slight tangent here. I would think of a little bit better name than Gridsum because I'm sure it has a meaning. And someone in the comments, please let me know the Gridsum, com uh, the meaning of it, why they call it Gridsum. I'm sure it's on the website somewhere, but it doesn't like scream to me like, Wow, like Gatsby sounds like, whoa, this is cool. This is a content management. I could do a Jamstack. Gritsum, I'm like, what? What is this? I don't know. I think a lot of people don't even know what Gritsum is. So, you know, here you know. Now you know. Check it out. And I'll make sure a link for all these websites are in the description below so you can learn more about them. So if I had to pick a winner right now, like between all these of ones that you probably haven't heard of or just are up-and-coming frameworks and libraries, or ones that have been out for a little while, for a couple of years, but still people don't know. I would definitely say Gridsum and Savelle are the ones that you should be looking out for just because Gridsum is getting a lot of popularity, a lot of plugins, a lot of things are coming out of it in the view world. And Svelte, I, I feel like it's the, it has upward momentum going for it. Uh, I'm still, obviously, beyond Vue, React, and Angular. These would be things that I, if I was a new developer and I've already kind of learned some of the basics, I would start 
kind of peeking into. I don't know if there's any jobs for these <laughs> grid sim or Svelte. I don't think there's many Svelte developers out there or grid sim developers. Um, but I, I think it's just kind of a fun technology, especially grid sums also would be great just for your own personal site. Instead of going with Gatsby, just hey, to put up a grid sum site, connect it up to a data source, use Contentful or, or some CMS. Uh, deploy it on Nellify has a bunch of plugins. You can easily deploy it anywhere. So that that's what I have today. A uh, special bonus, if you have made it all the way to the end, here's my special bonus, Elm. Elm, once again, been out for a while, for a few years, maybe even longer. It compiles into JavaScript, has great performance, functional language. It's like the dark horse in the background. People talk about Elm, and, uh, and it's still something to consider when you're doing a new project. And uh, I, okay, so thank you for guys for watching all the way to the end. I actually have um, a couple of free courses that I keep forgetting to hand out. So I will give away one, maybe possibly two courses. It's um, Dylan Israel's course on his uh, top 100 interview questions for front end developers. It's a really cool course. It's on Udemy right now. It's ten dollars. I'll make sure I l I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to go and buy it. But I'll choose one random person. Uh, who live who yeah likes this video leaves a comment for me and uh, make sure that you're subscribed as well and if you do all three of those things and leave a comment I will pick some random person to win that win that course um, but also just check out the description if you guys want to buy it so thanks that's all I got today appreciate it thank you